A lot of the time in video games, the goal is to make something that looks incredibly realistic. But often, what you can do in video games is not. So, developers have to make something that looks real, but isn't at all. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 video game locations that honestly look unreal. Starting off with Halo Infinite at number 10, the Zeta Halo. This one is a little broad, because it, it's hard to pick out just one specific part of Halo Infinite that stands out. Almost any time you're on Zeta Halo, where most of the game takes place, it's a visual spectacle. The way this game combines the familiar with the alien is really what makes it stand out. The pastoral rolling hills contrast sharply with the strange geometric rocks that are all over the place and the weird alien structures that are built into the scenery. No Halo game has a better skybox either. Seeing the entire Halo ring out in the distance looks great in pretty much every game in the series, but it's never looked better than here. The fact that this game actually has some open world elements means you spend more time looking around and being part of this strange alien world so the devs really put the work in to make this a really satisfying place to explore. Even the banished structures, which are all black and red and contrast really hard with the techno-organic features of the Halo look, are just really great looking and really pop when you view them from far away. Halo Infinite is just an all-around incredible looking game with some of the best, most visually interesting Halo environments in the series to date. At number 9 is God of War Ragnarok Spark of the World. This is another one of those games I could pick practically anywhere and it'd fit this list. The dwarven city is so dense and packed with details, but if I have to pick just one place that stands out above everything else, it's got to be the spark of the world. This relatively small area is found late in the game, and it's one of the most important locations Kratos visit in their adventure. It's a place that literally contains the primordial essence of the world, and it's about as alien as things get in the God of War world. It's a lava cave that opens up to an infinite starry abyss, and it's a place that I bet a lot of people stopped and stared at for a while. It's just one of those really beautiful and mysterious places. Special mention has to go to a few other notable places in the game, like the Raven Tree, which is a single spot, but it's one of the most beautiful, easily. Like, it's this tree frozen in a place for all time. There's a lot of great looking locations in Ragnarok. Uh, those are a few of my favorites. Feel free to share yours from this or any of the other games on this list in the comments. At number eight is Doom Eternal, Immora. Uh, one of the games that just has some of the most incredible skyboxes and environments. But I think with the DLC, The Forgotten Gods Part 1 and 2, they really managed to top themselves. My personal pick for the most amazingly unreal location here is Immora, the capital of hell and the final level in the DLC. The place is mostly just for show. It's not even really a full level, but the visuals are absolutely amazing. The Geiger-esque blood red city stands out like nothing else. Well, the sky all around you, there's this chaos of war. It's a stark contrast to the usual hell visuals you get in games. It seems like actually a cool place to live, if you're a demon, obviously. But it feels like they're intentionally inverting the look of the heavenly areas you go to, where the locations are ornate and starkly white, contrasted against a red alien world. This place is all red, um, cyclopean, almost overwhelming when you first enter it. It's a hell of a visual feast to end the game on, and one of the coolest environments environments in a game with a lot of cool levels in it. At number seven is the Las Vegas Dome from Horizon Forbidden West. Every time I come back to this game, I'm always struck by how incredible it looks at times. Forbidden West didn't exactly come out at the best time, so it kind of got overlooked a bit, because what the devs at Guerrilla managed to do with the engine is nothing short of amazing. Probably the most impressive has got to be the interior of the Las Vegas Dome. Flooded or not, it's this truly stunning place either way. Set in the dilapidated ruins of the city, this underground section was originally walled off because of the unlivable temperatures and no water. But a billionaire wanted to save the city, so they brought in the water and domed off the entire Vegas Strip so that people could still visit the City of Sin. That was thousands of years before the events of Forbidden West, and when you actually find Las Vegas, the entire dome is flooded with water, transforming the Strip into a massive underground aquarium. It makes the city, which the devs put a lot of effort into making as accurate as possible, still appear so alien and different in a really impressive way. There's the coral, the cave formations forming around parts of the old city combined with the neon holographic displays. It just gives the place a really unique atmosphere that's amazing and unreal looking in the best way.
At number six, Returnal's Derelict Citadel. In contrast to the dilapidated beauty of Horizon, the alien ruins of Returnal are oppressive and monolithic. This is one of those great looking games in general, filled with evocative alien environments, but my personal favorite biome is the one that's almost completely devoid of life. The Derelict Citadel is this massive tower and complex that seemingly stretches on forever. It's manned almost exclusively by robots and filled with alien corpses. It's an all-around miserable place that's still awe-inspiring just because of how big it is and how awesome and imposing everything looks. Many of the structures aren't fancy looking. They're just large sections of mostly bare walls broken up by some hole or damage that it took during some unknown battle that must have taken place there. Special mention has to go to the boss of the area as well, Nemesis, which is a piece of art all into its own. At number 5 is Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart's Blizar Prime. Between making the hyper-real Spider-Man games, Insomnia went back to its roots with the fantastically unreal Ratchet & Clank series. Rift Apart comes off like a victory lap for the studio saying, Oh, you thought that was impressive? Well, check this out. They were absolutely saying that about the planet Blizar Prime, one of the biggest set-piece levels in the whole game. When you first get here, it's an eye-popping asteroid field that's overloaded with detail, with floating chunks of planet flying all over the place while alien crystals grow all over the place. That alone would make this level noteworthy, but you can also go to an alternate universe version of the same planet where it remains intact and it's just as impressive. What's so interesting about these alternate versions of the same place is how both dimensions almost look completely different while still being the same location. You can see the giant machine in the center of both versions of the planet, one intact and one destroyed, and they both look just absolutely fantastic. And number four is Elden Ring's Lindell, the royal capital. While it doesn't have the most amazing visuals of all time, Elden Ring's art direction is second to none, and its ability to create these massive, mysterious vistas makes it one of the best open world games of all time. Like, it's not just showing you these incredible views, it's telling you that you can actually go to all these places. For most of the game, your main goal is to reach the royal capital, and I don't know about you, but I was bracing for disappointment. In a lot of open world games like this, cities are small and not that interesting. Interesting. So when I finally crossed the massive battlefield outside the walls and managed to find a bridge inside, the first time I saw the city was jaw-dropping. It's this giant tiered metropolis, everything white and gold filled with ornate structures and gothic steeples, like this gothic dragon pierced by a huge spear cut through the middle, and it's all silhouetted by the gigantic Erd tree in the background. It's a truly epic sight. And even better, you actually get to go down to the streets and explore this place. On closer inspection, the whole place is a lot more beat up and run down than it looks from high, but it's no less fascinating to explore. It's this game's on Orlando moment, but even better. And number three is Atomic Hearts Facility 3826, combining retro futurism, Soviet era dystopian design, and a touch of Dadaist absurd. Atomic Hearts Facility 3826 is the closest thing we've gotten to Bioshock from this modern era. The entire opening sequence is probably the most impressive moment. You start off on a gondola ride through a river, pass through an exposition, see a parade, take a trip up to the fully absurd office area that has an entire passenger jet tipped sideways in it, and then it's off to the car to get a full view of the facility. This is where it becomes clear you're not in a normal city, it's a flying city, and it's just one part of this massive alternate Soviet research base. The rest of the game takes place in much more mundane structures, but this initial car ride is really a spectacle. One of the best intros a game could ever have. I see you've finally begun your assignment, and it's been less than an hour. Sehr gut. Jawohl, mein Fjord. What did you just say? At number two is Destiny 2's Dreaming City. These are games that are known for their fantastic skyboxes and beautifully designed alien worlds, but out of every location created for the series, I think Bungie's best work has got to be the Dreaming City, the massive post-game area for the Forsaken expansion. This place is just nuts, a pocket dimension containing an entire massive city that's both ancient-looking and alien. Almost impossible to describe this place without just looking at it. Massive. Almost every spot in it is an incredible vista, and its mysteries remain exciting to explore even now. It's it's one of those places you just have to stop and look around in because it's just such an amazing location.
At number one is Guardians of the Galaxy. Nowhere. When it comes to places that are truly unreal looking, it doesn't get better than the Guardians of the Galaxy game. Like, their environmental designers were just out of control. Taking inspiration from the movies, it goes even further with the crazy designs, and, and that seemed to be their primary goal, and it really shows in the city of nowhere. This place is crazy looking in the movies. I mean, it's set in a hollowed out head of a celestial, but with this game, they took the abstract and alien nature of this place and made one of the most impressively alien spectacles in any game to date. Just look. It's crazy looking, especially when you're near the rift. The stunning white alien shapes of the rift, contrasted against the more utilitarian design of the deck, filled in with the strange red tendrils. This is just insane to look at with all these weird geometric boxy shapes mixed in. Like, it's this pure visual overload in the best way. For having an almost perfect mix of completely unhinged art direction with unmatched visual fidelity, the surprisingly good Guardians of the Galaxy game gets the top spot on this list. But what about for you? Are there really unreal places you want to discuss in any of these games or even in other games? Leave us a comment. Let us know. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.